Hello, cases like this make me very happy I didn't go into oral surgery. There are few things more difficult than extracting a brittle old endodontically treated decayed tooth, especially if it's on an elderly person. You know, it's just, they break up into pieces. It's hard to predict the time. A lot of people send these cases to the poor oral surgeon just because they want to have some control of their schedule. So I'm going to show you what I've done with these two teeth that needed to be extracted. Then I've grafted the socket and we're going to come back and place implants after the sockets have healed for six months. So this is before and after and I'm using a type of graft material that I really, really, really like called Osteogen. It's a plug and you put it into the socket and I'll show you how great it works. This is before and after. So you look at these cases before you start and you know it's going to be a bear. It's just difficult. Decayed endo teeth on an elderly person is just going to be unpredictable and difficult because it's hard to get the tooth out in one piece like you can do often with a younger person. So this is just going to be, you need to have some time. So painless and profound local anesthesia is so key. I see so many patients and the patient says, my dentist could never get me numb. And they gave me 10 injections. Please listen to what I'm telling you. It's not a volume thing, it's a technique thing. If you're doing endo on a tooth or if you're extracting a tooth, you have to give an intraligamental injection along with the mandibular block or the maxillary infiltration. If you don't give the intraligamental injection, the tooth has a very high probability of not being completely anesthetized. Okay, so you have to give a intraligamental. And the way you do that, use a 30 gauge needle, usually you can use a 27, turn the bevel toward the tooth into the sulcus after you've given the block and just apply steady pressure for about a count of about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I count to about 30, and I may give it on several points because especially if you've got an apprehensive patient, if they feel the injection, it's gonna be, I grew up ranching, it's gonna be like a horse that's skittish, and you go in and you just throw a saddle on it. You've, you've lost the moment. If you can start out with no pain, and they never feel any pain, you are off to the races. Don't forget to like this video. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a new upload. Now you'll notice I left this video in because when I'm elevating the bicuspid that has a crown, and the first bicuspid also has a crown, the crown comes off of the first bicuspid. So I'm not trying to make this sugar coated. This is really what happens in a real dental practice. And I'm first incising into the sulcus of those teeth and reflecting a flap. So I'm elevating the teeth. Now remember if you turn the elevator over the top like that, it puts less pressure on the tooth in front. So what I'm trying to do here is create space to elevate the parts of the teeth in two. So you know this molar has got three roots, two mesial and one distal. And so I'm treating the two mesial as one root and the distal root is one root and I want to have space to elevate those roots in two. Now what I'm trying to do, if I'm thinking I'm going to place implants later on, is preserve the buccal bone and the lingual bone. I don't care if I remove some of the bone interproximally. If I've got to remove bone, I'd rather remove the interproximal bone than the facial bone or the lingual bone. Now I'm just trying to get elevation. Like I said, these are bears. You know they're going to be tough because they're so brittle. And to make it even worse, it's an elderly person 
and they've had endodontics on the first molar and there's a lot of decay. So sometimes you just do what you've got to do to get the tooth out. I'm having to remove a little bone. This is a very small, long shank round burr. I want to just create a little space. And there goes the distal root. So now I've got space on the distal to elevate the mesial roots and I'm treating them as one root. And we're also extracting the second bicuspid, which has three roots, you'll see here in just a minute. So that one's out. Now, what are you having to think about with a lower second bicuspid? You've always got to keep in mind the middle foramen and the middle nerve. You don't want to get close to that if you're having to remove any bone. You want to take the tooth up from that and not take any chances on damaging the, ling the uh, inferior alveolar nerve in the, the mental foramen. So see, it's hard. I know going in, there's a fair chance that this crown is gonna come off the tooth. I don't wanna break the tooth, but just because, you know, how are you gonna get that second bicuspid out? And it's decayed, so you know you're probably gonna lose the crown on the second bicuspid, and you're probably gonna have the crown come off of the first bicuspid, just see all the decay underneath that. So I'm trying to create space on the distal of the second bicuspid to elevate it into, because you don't have enough tooth structure to put the forceps on the tooth and elevate the tooth directly out of the socket. So I'm trying to move it and have blood go into the periodontal ligament space that will help me with the extraction. So lots of decay, brittle teeth. There goes the crown off the tooth in front of it, which this is real world dentistry. This is what happens. So now I'm gonna go ahead and extract that second by, which is just like concrete. If you've extracted many teeth, you know this happens. Like I said, I was in an oral surgery fellowship for two years, and so for two years, all I did was extract teeth, wisdom teeth, place implants. So I have extracted a lot of teeth. Finally, here we go. This was an interesting bicuspid because you can see it's got three roots. How many times have you seen that? I can't remember ever seeing that before this one. Our editor studied this and he said there's less than 1%, so this is an anomaly. But you can see all the decay. So teeth are out. I'm gonna re-cement the crown on this first bicuspid. All the pieces are out. Now this osteogen plug has been a game changer for me. It's fabulous. It adheres to the socket. It covers everything. It's, it has a tremendous amount of effect on hemostasis, stopping bleeding, and patients have no pain afterward. I'm not just making this up. I've done multiple extractions this week. Wisdom teeth, decayed teeth, broken teeth, and I packed the sockets with this osteogen and it is a game changer. You put it in the socket and then you take a large plugger and plug it in. You can wet it and once it wets, it adheres. It just kind of dissolves, but not completely dissolving away. Now I use the big plugger in this kit and it plugs in and you don't have to have a membrane with this either. And you don't have to have a contact of the flaps. You don't have to have primary closure. It acts as a membrane. So it is truly a game changer. So I've probably placed two osteogen plugs in the sockets and you just plug it in with the plugger and then I'm gonna put two or three suture. You don't have to use a membrane. If you've watched my videos, you know I used to use granular bone graft. I've used PRF, I like that. But this is so easy and so effective. I use membranes, you know, with uh, adhesive on the membrane for wisdom teeth. But now I'm using this for wisdom teeth and just regular extractions. So easy and so effective. I call the patients at night 
and every, I'll think, oh, they're going to have pain with this just because it was a difficult extraction. And every one since I've been using this is, I have no pain, I have no bleeding. A patient the other night that I'd taken two difficult teeth out on said, I don't even feel like I've been to the dentist. So there's something to it. And when you suture, you want to go one, two, three away from you, pull, one towards you, pull, one away, pull. If you go one, two, three, it stops. It the, the knot stays put. If you go just one, two, sometimes the knot won't stay put. But taking out brittle, decayed teeth, especially on elderly people, is one of the most unpredictable procedures you can perform. So this is before and after. So we're gonna let this heal for six months. Then I'm gonna take a radiograph of that. We're gonna place an implant and we'll put a whole video system together of the extraction, the graft, six months post-op healing. When I extract a tooth and graft it, I always let the socket heal for six months just because it really takes that long for it to heal completely. If you try to rush it, and put an implant into the extraction site before it's healed completely, you've got a much greater chance of losing the implant. So we're gonna video that when that happens in six months. You know, the other thing that makes these osteogen plugs really handy and effective is we had a patient last week that had no veins. And so I couldn't do uh, draw blood and spin it down into platelet-rich fibrin. And sometimes patients just have no findable veins. And I use IV sedation almost every day. I've done over 9,000 IVs, so I'm good at finding veins. But some people have no findable veins. So this is effective if you, can't, if you don't want to use platelet-rich fiber. That's the dental minute. These techniques work, and they work every time. Are you ready to take your dentistry practice to the highest level possible? Of course you are. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com where you will get Dr. Cupper's greatest work and best cases. Here's what you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You will get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos and Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference, before and after photos of Dr. Cupper's fantastic restored cases. Cases. And all of this, I repeat, all of this is just $40 a month. This is something you cannot pass up. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com.